Greetings guys, this is Tokraft, and welcome to this new Swedish Tank Destroyer preview video. In this video I'm going to run down every new tank of the Swedish Tank Destroyer line. I will go up from tier 1 to tier 10. I will give my thoughts on every tank, and also we're going to see what every tank is going to be capable of. And also we're going to see a new game mechanic. So if this sounds interesting to you, please keep watching and let's get right into this. So everyone, let's start off with the new tier 1 Swedish light tank. It is the Stritzwagen FV... FV <laughs> yeah, well, as we can see, it's a pretty <laughs> huge tier 1 tank. Very funny to look at. But this big slug of a tank isn't really going to bounce you really much. It only has 40mm all around uh, on the whole of the tank. So don't expect to bounce anything. Also, the mobility is pretty lackluster. It is only 25 kilometers an hour forwards and 14 backwards. Yeah, well, you're not gonna bomb it round with this tank on the battlefield, really. If we take a look at the guns that this thing gets, this thing gets the choice of two guns, one tier two autoloader gun and one tier one gun. So let's quickly take a look at the differences between the, these two guns and the autoloader. Here we go. So. This autoloader gets 10 shells in the magazine, uh, which reloads in 8 seconds, which is pretty alright. Uh, then we can see a penetration of 27 and an average damage of 12 per shell. Yeah, well, I think the, the 27 is pretty alright, because, yeah, most tier 1 tanks don't even have more than 20 millimeters of armor. So, the penetration of 27 is enough. It is very inaccurate, though, this autoloader. 0.05, which is just terrible. The aim time is... Mm, bit mediocre 2.5 seconds uh, but it could be a lot worse if we then take a look at the tier 1 gun uh, and this is also the gun that I would prefer why would I prefer this gun uh, it fires a lot more shots per minute so this DPM of the tier 1 gun is higher it gets a little bit more penetration which yeah it's just a little bit more handy in even in tier 1 battles you will be able uh, able to penetrate other tier 1 tanks more easily so that's good you get an alpha damage of 40 yeah well not very special but if you fire a lot of rounds uh, in one minute uh, you still will be able to do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time also this gun is very inaccurate 0.44 but still it is a lot better compared to the t2 autoloader but this gun gets a really good aim time of 1.9 seconds so yeah well this is not anything special, this tank. This is just the tier 1 that loops you up into the Swedish tech tree. So, let's now get towards the tier 2. We're going to go to the tier 2 new Swedish tank destroyer. And would you look at this, guys. What a weirdly looking vehicle. It is very funny to look at, though. I really like the Swedish flags here, and I really like the colors of the tanks. But oh well, as we can see again, yeah... Just to be expected, no armor whatsoever. 10 to 8 millimeters everywhere. You're not going to bounce anything pretty much. Yeah, your tracks might absorb a shot once or twice, but don't count on those tracks at all, I should say. So, is this tank mobile? Let's take a look. This tank, uh, let me see, goes to a top speed limit of 50 kilometers an hour which is very mobile indeed and even the backwards top speed is 20 which is pretty good so this thing is pretty mobile which is very good the specific power to weight ratio isn't that good but well <coughs> you're not you can't get anything right you can't get everything is what i meant to say so let's take a look at the guns of these tier 2 tanks as you can see it can mount the same tier 2 autoloader as the tier 1 and it can mount a new 37 millimeter gun so let's take a look at that gun so we can see that this gun gets a 55 millimeters of penetration with 40 alpha damage and a little bit more rate of fire than the tier 1 gun had on the tier 1 tank still this gun is very inaccurate and it has a pretty all right aim time so uh, yeah your penetration went up by a little bit your rate of fire went up by a little bit from all the tier 2 uh, tier 1 gun up and a little bit more accuracy 
and you only had to lose one tenth of a second of aim time. So well, uh, in my opinion, this uh, I have no idea how to pronounce this name really. <laughs> well, nothing special here, in my opinion. But then we're gonna go to the tier three tank, the IKV seventy two. It looks like, uh, yeah, it, it, it immediately I immediately recognize the model a little bit. It looks like a SU one hundred or a Object seven hundred four, for instance, maybe. So let's see what this tank can do. Again, just as the rest of the tanks in this line, no armor pretty much whatsoever. Uh, so don't expect to bounce anything. Again, your tracks can sometimes absorb a shot, but that that's just world of tanks that happens sometimes. So, is this tank mobile? Let's take a look. This tank gets a top speed limit of 57 kilometers an hour. So, that is a really good top speed limit for a tier 3 tank destroyer. And a very good backwards top speed limit of 20. So, although you don't get much armor, this thing will be able to reloc relocate quickly. So, it can engage enemies from very long distances. And that's always what this tank probably wants to do. Because it doesn't have much armor and... It is pretty mobile, so it has the mobility to be able to keep its enemy at a distance. So, let's take a look at the gun of this tank. Let's see what choices we have. We get the choice of two guns, as we can see. Two T4 guns. So, let's quickly compare the two and see what we got. And this one. So, let's take a look, everyone. As we can see... Um... What gun do I have mounted? I think I have mounted the right gun at the moment. The one that's on the right at the moment. So as we can see. There's not very much uh, different between these two guns. The only difference as we can see is a little bit of rate of fire. A little bit of penetration. The alpha damage is the same. A little bit of accuracy and a little bit of aim time. Yeah well nothing really special here. But I think that this 97mm of penetration... Is a very good amount uh, of penetration. Especially for a tier 3 tank. So this is a very compatible gun. Really compatible tier 3 tank destroyer in my opinion. So let's now go up towards the tier 4. And then we can see that it... Oh my god this looks a bit like a self propelled gun. Right? Well it might as well be. Because this uh, gets a pretty comparable gun for an SPG. So let's quickly take a look. It gets the choice of... Four of three guns with the tier 5 gun being the top one. So let's quickly take a look. Mm, pretty bad rate of fire. Pretty bad accuracy. Is, uh, accuracy. Pretty bad penetration on all its rounds. Um, just for the record guys. This is a uh, AP rounds. You can get AP rounds for standard. The middle ones are heat rounds. And uh, the last ones of course are HE. So let's quickly take a look here. We can see HE is uh, probably the best one. To uh, take a standard while you get a little bit more uh, of alpha damage. And you don't lose that much on the penetration. If you really want to make sure you penetrate uh, your enemy tanks with a good amount of penetration. Then I would only uh, advise you to buy some heat rounds and not even bother with the AP rounds. Yeah well they cost a lot of credits. But as we can see the heat rounds almost get twice as much penetration as the AP rounds. Uh, and also about the HE rounds, if you don't manage to penetrate them, you will of course still be able to splash at least 100 damage uh, on enemy tanks anyways. So, dispersion at 100 meters, the accuracy is really bad, 0.56, yeah well, uh, expect to miss a lot of shots. Even if you fully aim the gun for 3.5 seconds, which is also pretty bad. Yeah well, this gun, it's not really a gun that I look forward to, to be honest. But as we can see, it gets a little bit more armor than the rest of the tanks in this, um, this Swedish tech tree line of the tank destroyers. Uh, I don't really think it's enough to bounce anything though. 50 millimeters, yeah, you will uh, certainly, of course, sometimes bounce a shield because sometimes you just get lucky. But uh, this is not armor to count on, in my opinion, whatsoever. So the top speed limit, 43 forwards and 20 backwards. It's a bit of a downgrade compared to the tier 3. But it's not that bad, you know. 43 is still pretty decent. Um, especially for a tank that looks yeah, a lot bigger than the T3. Look at that. This also is a lot higher profile than the last one. So yeah, well guys. It is, uh, it is certainly nothing special, this thing. Uh, but what I really like is that there's a lot of 
uh, variety in the kinds of tanks that Wargaming have introduced here. We can see the uh, previous tier tanks uh, being just like normal low tier tank destroyers. And then something totally different at tier 4. And that is what I really, really like. It might not be the most competitive tank ever. But I think it is... Um, Really funny and really awesome that we have such a big variety of tanks in this game. So well guys, then we go up to the tier 5 and look at this. This just looks awesome in my opinion. Again, sort of like a mini object 704 but then at tier 5. So as we can see the armor, nothing special. You will not be able to bounce anything. 18 millimeters at most. So don't expect to bounce anything. For this low armor profile, it's... Uh, armor profile for this low amounts of armor it does get a very good mobility 60 kilometers per hour top speed forwards and 20 kilometers an hour backwards that's just amazing just like the t3 this tank will be able to relocate very quickly but compared to the t3 this thing gets a really different gun as we can see this thing gets a 10.5 centimeter gun so let's take a look at this gun it gets 120 uh, millimeters of penetration, which is really good for a tier 5 tank in my opinion. Yeah, it's not... There are tanks that have a lot more, there are tanks that have a lot less. But I think 120 is still pretty good. Also, I have to mention the rate of fire, which is pretty bad. 5.4, you will not even be able to reload in 10 seconds, roughly. So, yeah. This, ton, this gun does take a lot of time. To reload itself. You do get a very nice alpha damage of 300. But the accuracy is just diabolically bad. 0.42. With a very alright aim time of 2.1 seconds. And as we can see guys. This tank shoots heat shells as standard. And heat shells as premium ammunition. And for the premium heat shells. You only go up by 20 millimeters. As we can see. You will only be able to get 20 more millimeters of penetration. So um, I wouldn't even bother with... Buying too many of these heat rounds because yeah well you're going to have to relocate uh, and position, your, position yourself really well to be able to uh, engage tier 7 tanks with this penetration but still I think this is really manageable the problem that I had with playing this tank on the test server is that of course the shell velocity and the shell loop when you fire a shell is just very long and it takes a lot of time uh, for your shell to uh, arrive at the target also, you have to give a lot of lead, and that's just really hard to work with sometimes. But, also if you give a lot of lead, the shell, uh, yeah, characterizes itself by going really high up. And uh, most of the time will just fly over your target. So, uh, I wasn't really a big fan of this gun whatsoever. But I think this is just a really uh, good uh, tank for the variety in World of Tanks. Uh, and as a player... Uh, like me, I will never skip out on any tank. I'd like to buy them all. So, uh, I'd like to play with every tank possible. But let's not let talk about that. Let's go up towards the tier 6. Uh, and a tank that I really, really liked. Again, this is a really mobile um, tank destroyer. 60 kilometers per hour top speed forwards and 20 backwards. Just amazing stuff here. Again, uh, no armor really to talk about. But if you get this amount of mobility it's just it is just very awesome so then we get towards the gun and that's really the speciality of this tank because now we really get the good gun statistics um that as we can see here not a very good rate of fire but we can see that for a tier 6 we get 180 millimeters of penetration which is just amazing also 230 for the premium rounds which is <laughs> it's, i'm just speechless man this penetration is amazing also the alpha damage is 200 which is really good um this one this tank will not get the highest dpm because of the uh, long reload time but i was a really big fan of this gun not only because of the penetration but also because of the very good accuracy and the very good aim time at least compared to the other tanks in this tech tree still 0.34 is very good and it is very accurate uh, it, it feels a bit like a british 20 pounder really uh, i really liked to play this tank so that is done now let's go up towards the tier 7 and now we get something that looks totally different from all the tanks previous in this tech tree. 
we get a tank that looks a lot like the tier 8 uh, from up to tier 10. And it has a gun mounted in a sort of, yeah, it looks it looks a bit like, I, I don't even know, it's a bit like a shoe or something. Or a foot. <laughs> I don't even know. But as we can see, again, really good mobility. 65 km per hour top speed forwards and 20 backwards. Just amazing stuff. Again, no armor really to talk about. Just like the other tanks in this tech tree. And again, the speciality of this tank is the gun. So, it is very comparable to the gun at the tier 6. But you get a lot more rate of fire. You get a lot more penetration. You get uh, the same alpha damage. It's a bit less accurate. And the aim time is just a bit longer. 210 uh, is a really good penetration for a tier 7 tank. I really liked uh, this tank to play as well on the test server. So yeah, well... That's, that's some awesome stuff. And now we're going to go towards the tier 8. And uh, the speciality from tier 8 up to tier 10. Is of course the new siege mode. And the new game mechanic that Wargaming have introduced. Basically what it all comes down to. Let me quickly explain. Uh, these tier 8 Swedish. Of yeah from tier 8 up at least. These Swedish tank destroyers get a new uh, game mechanic. Which basically, uh, yeah, which is called the Siege Mode. Basically, all these tank destroyers from Tier 8 up have got two modes. They've got one mode for driving, for travel mode, that's what it's called. And one Siege Mode. And the Siege Mode is for firing. So, what will the Siege Mode enable you to do? You will be It will enable you to, um, yeah, push up your tracks, uh, so to say. And when you're pushing up your tracks... You will be able to increase the angle of your uh, upper glazes plate here really. But you will see that um, in some more detail in the gameplay that you can also see in the right of this video. But as we can see this tank will be able to uh, point up its gun at least uh, upwards still. The tier 8 and the 9 tank uh, will have their gun fully fixed into the hull as we can see. So there... You are going to have to be an expert uh, using the siege mode. And this tier 8 vehicle is just a sort of introduction to the new siege mode mechanic. But what it all comes down to. To enable the siege mode you gotta press X. And then it takes 2 seconds in this tank for you uh, to enter the siege mode. And what will siege mode enable you to do? Your rate of fire will go up. Your accuracy will go up a little bit. Uh, basically all your gun statistics will improve a little bit when you go into the siege mode. Uh, the thing that goes down is your mobility. You will not be able to uh, drive very quickly. You will not be able to relocate. If you want to relocate, you have to enable travel mode again. And you have to press the X key again. Then it will take another 2 seconds for you to come back into the travel mode. And you'll be able to drive away whenever you want. But in the travel mode, the gun statistics will be as shown in the garage here. So let's quickly take a look at these mechanics um yeah a pretty bad ray of fire again but as we can see just an amazing penetration for a tier 9 tank destroyer 288 millimeters and 330 on the apcr rounds if you had apcr rounds this tank shoots apcr standard as well as it having uh, apcr as premium ammunition which is really nice the apcr is really nice to work with also, you get a really good alpha damage of 390. You really pack a punch whenever you hit an enemy tank. Also, pretty alright uh, accuracy of 0.35. But a very bad aim time of 3 seconds. But as I said, when you enter the siege mode, all these gun statistics uh, will get a little bit better. At least the accuracy and the aim time. So as we can see, uh, what about the model of this tank? As we can see... This tank doesn't really get much armor whatsoever. But as you can see, the upper glazes plate is 20 millimeters, And it is just angled in an extreme angle. And with the new penetration uh, changes in patch 9.17. This tank will certainly be able to bounce shots on its upper glazes plate. Especially if you enter the siege mode. Um, which will enable you to angle up your upper glazes plate even more. So I just really... Look forward to this new game mechanic. I have tried this game mechanic of course on the test server. And I have to say that it wasn't the easiest to work with. I really had to uh, 
uh, learned how to work with it at first. Um, but I think it's just, just awesome that Wargaming have finally introduced something new to the game. And uh, yeah, that these, these Swedish tanks have, have their own speciality, so to say. So now we're jumping up to the tier 9 tank, the Stritzwagen 1030. Just look at this, guys. It just, it just looks amazing, really. So as I said, the gun in this tank is fully fixed into the tank. So when you are in travel mode, you will not be able to aim to the right or aim to the left. You're going to have to turn your whole tank around. And to get into the siege mode, again, you press the X key and it will take you 2.5 seconds to enter the siege mode. Just a little longer than the tier 8 one, as we can see. But still, this tank is also very, very, very mobile. Still with 50 km an hour top speed limit. I think it's just a little bit worse than the tier 8, which gets a 70 km per hour top speed limit and a 50 km per hour top speed backwards. Forgot to mention this. That's my bad. But look at this, man. That's just ridiculous. A 50 km per hour top speed of backwards top speed limit. And this thing is very comparable. But the forward top speed goes down to 50. And the backward top speed goes down to 45. But still, that's that's some really unusual uh, mobility statistics. But a thing that I really like. Because that gives their these tanks, again, their own speciality. So, the armor. Again, nothing really special to talk about. 40 millimeters at most here on the big upper glazes. But again, with the siege mode, you will be able to angle up your hull even more. And be able to bounce shots. So let's now take a look at this tank's gun. This thing gets, of course, a tier 10 gun. Uh, with a pretty bad rate of fire. It's not the best rate of fire ever. But still, it gets an amazing penetration. Just an amazing penetration of 308. That's just a ridiculous amount of penetration. Also, it gets 390 alpha damage, which is really nice. But a bad accuracy of 0.4 and uh, 3 seconds of aim time. But again, in siege mode, these statistics will go, will go down just a little bit. And you will have a little bit better gun statistics. So, that's pretty much it for the tier 9 tank. As we can see, this tank gets 1450 hit points. I didn't really mention the hit points on the other tanks. Because, yeah, in lower tiers, I don't think it is that important. But, as we can see here, uh, not very many hit points whatsoever so you're going to have to play very cautiously in this tank and really um, be at the back of the map so to say always uh, try to engage your enemies from long range because if they manage to penetrate your tank uh, and they manage to focus you down you're going to have a problem really quickly and now up to the top of the tree the tier 10 the Stritzwagen 103 B this is just an amazing little tank yeah little tank it is pretty small as we can see but it just looks amazing the model as we can see gets upgraded a lot it's a little bit bigger i suppose but still as we can see the gun is still fixed in two uh into the tank as we can see to switch to siege mode you have to press x again uh and it takes you 2.5 seconds to get in there and to get out of the siege mode back into travel mode it will take you only two seconds so it's a little improvement from the tier 9 up also as you can see still the same amount of armor as the tier 9 40 millimeters of most on the upper place a uh, glacier's plate and with siege mode again you will be able to increase those angles but as we can see the tier 10 gets something that the tier 9 does not get and that is this amazing uh, armor shield yeah it's not really armor shield but this shield here on the front of the tank which looks a bit like a fence will take heat shells like i don't even know what it will take heat shells like uh, a fat man trying to eat cookies so to say this will just take all the heat shells that an enemy tank fires at you it will just absorb an insane amount of shells so it is very hard to hit the upper glazes plate of this tank. Uh, and if you do. It still has to go through 40 millimeters of extremely angled armor. So that's just the thing that's amazing about this tank. Again the mobility. Same as the tier 9. 50 km per hour top speed forwards and 45 backwards. Still really funny. <laughs> uh, yeah. Constant of uh, mobility statistics. And now let's get into the gun. You get a, a bit of an upgrade from the tier 9 up. You get the same amount of penetration, but your rate of fire just goes up massively. The same penetration, as I said, and the same alpha damage 
on these shells, you get an amazing penetration of 0 0.3, which is just amazing. 0 0.3 is one of the most accurate in the game. But still, it gets a really bad aim time of 3 seconds. But again, in the siege mode, these statistics will improve just a little bit. So in siege mode, this 0.3 accuracy will go up uh, by even more, which is just ridiculous, guys. So guys, that were all the new Swedish tank destroyers run down from tier 1 to tier 10. I hope this video was enjoyable to watch because I put a lot of time into the editing of this video. And if it was enjoyable, please let me know in the comments down below or by leaving a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.